Welcome back to the watch list. Uh, we're taking a look here at IBM, uh, also Netflix too, but really a look at here at IBM first as the company is due to report earnings. We have the pros in here. Dan Morgan's with us, Vice President, yeah, Senior Portfolio yeah. Manager, Sonova's Trust Company. And Melissa Armo, founder, owner of the stock Swoosh. Thank you both for being with us. Dan, we've seen an AI boom. When I think of IBM, you know, we all remember Watson. It feels like they knew something was brewing some time ago. Now it's Watson X. Where do they stand in the AI initiative and the battle? Very right, Nicole. I mean, they were one of the first companies, uh, along with Meta, who was very early in on AI and you know, they have their Watson X. Um, probably most of their AI initiatives will be kind of spearheaded through their consulting group. Uh, bear in mind that IBM derives about 75% of their revenues from software and consulting. But unfortunately, Nicole, uh, IBM has not gotten the AI multiple that some of these other stocks have, especially NVIDIA, some of the chip stocks like Marvel and Broadcom. Uh, we haven't really seen a, a much of an expansion in multiple in terms of IBM or enthusiasm around the stock. Uh, the stock is actually slightly down for the year where a lot of the big tech stocks are way up. So uh, it'll be interesting on this call, uh, Nicole, to see if we start to get some sort of discussion from management to kind of create a clear path uh, that IBM uh, is going to follow to participate uh, to become more of an AI play. But they definitely have products out there. They're definitely a player. They just haven't really seemed to get the lift that other AI companies in the tech space have in terms of their multiple. Yeah, and as you talk about the software growth, I mean, Red Hat, a big part of that, that growth um, in the quarter. So we'll be watching for that. In the meantime, how the company is facing the backlash over some of the new source code policies that are reportedly making it somewhat difficult to create operating systems that are compatible with Red Hat. Um, Melissa, good afternoon to you. Wanted to get your thoughts on IBM, which actually, unlike tech in general, this is a loser year to date. It's definitely a loser year to date. And when you look at the overall market and you compare IBM with the overall market, it looks terrible, quite frankly, because the market's been rallying since January 1st. And on top of that, the last time the stock made brand new all-time highs was 11 years ago. And we had a very bullish market in 2021. And even then, IBM couldn't get a leg up. So IBM, for all it's worth as far as a long-term play, people like it, the dividends, everything else, even if it has a good earnings, even if it reacts positive to their earnings tonight, I'm not so sure if it's really gonna go anywhere. It hasn't seen $200 a share in a long, long time. And, uh, you know, final thoughts here, Dan, on IBM before I get to Netflix. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with Melissa. I mean, IBM has really turned into a kind of a cash flow dividend stock. Their yield's about 4.99. Uh, we come into the second quarter, both revenues and earnings are expected to be flat. I think consensus estimates for fiscal year 2023 are looking for about $62.5 in revenues, which is only about a 3% growth rate. So at this point, they have been kind of missing out on this big bull market in tech. Yeah, and you have Amazon and Microsoft and others in the world of competition for the the different businesses, right? Um, let's get to Netflix, which has been a winner. Melissa, your thoughts on Netflix? Well, Netflix had a massive rally yesterday. If you happen to capture that yesterday, stock ran up more than $20, and I don't know if that's gonna screw up whatever it does tonight on the earnings, because to have a rally like that 24 hours before the earnings yesterday really looked like an earnings day, but it wasn't. So, you know, I think the problem is for Netflix, again, Netflix is in a downtrend. While it's been trying to make a comeback, it, had, it is still in a downtrend. Remember when we had that crater gap in Netflix? It was like more than a year ago. It was in the beginning of 2022 when it had earnings. I think it was April of 2022. The stock really hasn't recovered since that. And again, the last time this stock made brand new all-time highs was years and years and years ago. So while the overall market, that's a problem with the market. I want to say this really quick about the market. The market is round. Yes, we're up for the year. But you're, you're not seeing the same type of rally and bullish market we've seen in the past where you have this sector, this sector, this sector, and you have everything going together. It's this, NVIDIA's up, and you have Apple up, and then you have some banks look good, some banks look bad. Like, not everything is really going. It's like you're trying to push some of these stocks up the hill, 
and some of them just don't want to get going. Netflix has to be. Netflix has to be up a lot. Netflix has to really get going tonight for me to want to buy it tomorrow. Right, and you make a good point. It went from, in six months, it went from $700 in the month of October and then had that big gap down in April of 2022. In fact, it went from $700 down to $162. It's been creeping back, but um, certainly not back to those new highs. It's at 478 today. Um, Dan, what do we need to see from Netflix? I mean, we, we know that they've been cracking down on password sharing. Um, they've had the ad tier system and they're reducing at least in part to make money. And hey, Nicole, obviously uh, Netflix is gonna trade on subscriber growth. The consensus for the second quarter is 1.8 uh, million new subscribers. They're expected to do 4.7 million in the third quarter. So everyone will be paying attention to the guidance that management gives for the upcoming quarter. Also, we want to learn more about their basic with advertising initiative. We think there's about 5 million subscribers that have signed up for that. That's their $6.99 a month service where you uh, have a you know lower cost average uh, membership um, associated with getting the feeds, but you're getting advertising on top of that. So there's a lot of enthusiasm that maybe a year from now they could start to kind of monetize uh, more of these subscribers that are uh, currently getting a reduced uh, membership with advertising. So I think that's where the street's going to focus. Also, you're going to get a million questions, Nicole, I heard you talking about before I came on about the writer strike. We know that Netflix management has come out and said that they don't expect to have a material impact for fiscal year 2023 into 24. But let's face it, if this strike goes on for a sustained period of time, you're going to have to start to wonder whether Netflix, in terms of all those streaming shows they have, are going to start to be impacted. So I think that'll be a big question that's going to be on a lot of analysts' minds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 10 seconds, Dan, would you own either or both these two companies? We own IBM and our equity income model uh, for the dividend yield. Netflix is a stock that is on our hold list, but not on our buy list. Uh, so okay. those are two well, stocks. Let's, uh, you know, that's what we're active let's, uh, in right now. Your thoughts? No on IBM. Netflix needs to get over 500. If it does that, then I'll look at it as a long. Yeah, I'm sorry to step on you guys, but I just really wanted to get uh, both your viewpoints here on whether these were must-owns or maybe wait and see. Dan Morgan, Sonova's Trust Company, Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Thank you both. I'm Nicole Petalides. Thanks for being with me every single weekday, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. right here on the TD Ameritrade Network. Keep it right here. Oliver Rennick, Market on Close, next.